Hello, everyone. Hi, Cynthia. Hey, Rachel. Hello. Hey, everybody. Thanks for joining us for Friday Class Live. I've got Cynthia of Green Girl Studios. We're going to be playing around today with one of her pieces and some brand new gems and check glass at the bead shop. So I sent them over to you. What do you what do you think of what what I sent over? Well, when I opened the package, I was delighted by your color palette, the beautiful peach moonstone. They were when I opened them, I thought, wow, those look just like sunstones. Mm -hmm. They have uh, they have a kind of a like a silveriness that's similar to sunstone, yeah. but they're really beautiful. And I really like this. Uh, is it, the green is a the dark green rondelles? Yeah, the Kambaba Jasper. Oh, that's right. Yeah, those so are really pretty. pretty too. And they work yeah, this well is together. our palette. Yeah, and it's getting yeah, very you know, like the earthy. Pop of blue desert. is so pretty. What yeah, I these? love that idea. These. What yeah, are what's was, this? The glass. <laughs> Sorry. Yes, these are uh, Czech glass, uh, metallic navy English cuts. Yeah. So when we were like working together on this palette, I would, you know, we were doing all these colors, all very similar, different tones, and you were like, "Let's add a pop of blue," and I, I love that. I think that's going to add a nice dimension to the piece. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Fabulous. it's a good. Sometimes you need a good pop of a contrast, mm -hmm. and you know, on the color wheel, when you're looking at, it, you usually will have if you do a, a, a like a. Yeah, you know what? I should just get the color wheel so I don't have to try and explain <laughs> well, yeah, it to you. I think orange and blue, right? Those are opposites. Yeah, there are, there are opposites on the color wheel. Mm -hmm. And I feel like when you have shades of that, it's kind of fun to use those opposites and use that kind yeah. of scintillation. So, yeah, so this, anyway, this is, these are the goodies we're going to play with. But we also have your one of your, well, at least it's new for us, new that we're carrying this, the scarab button. Will you tell... Tell us about this. Where did, I don't know, how, do you know how long you've had this design or what inspired um, I've had it? Them for quite a few years. That one, you know, uh, I had an idea of making a kind of a steampunk type piece. Mm. And I really like scarabs in general because the beetles themselves, they kind of, they're called dung beetles. And in ancient Egypt, they were considered sacred because they would roll their poop balls across it was considered they're rolling it there is like significant because it's like rolling it across Ooh. they're like rolling the sun across the the sky oh. and so it was kind of a sacred image of something like really <laughs> you know the symbolism is supposed to be really like special so yeah anyway i, I wanted to make one detail they have like just all those little yeah, dots fun to make the really details fun. yes i keep they're messing so with this my you know every time <laughs> I have a background. I tell you, every time I do one of these lives, something is wonky with either my screen where I'm like falling out of the picture, <laughs> or <laughs> or but that it's, I, somehow my 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 tripod keeps leaning <laughs> to another direction. I'm like this. I'm telling you, five minutes ago, this was not happening. Oh, good. But, well, um, that that's photo how it goes. You as soon as you're live, it's just so pretty. <laughs> you were saying that that's a photo from nearby you that. You know, an yeah, artist this is, uh, off the Blue Ridge Parkway. I had wow. a friend that had a, you know, they have a business selling these uh, backdrops. And mm. I thought, man, that looks just, I could be in the woods right now. And that's, I don't know exactly where this creek is, but um, it looks like the creek that I go to every day. Yeah, Almost. well, I, that photo makes me want to move to North Carolina. So it's oh, working. Well, it's uh, <laughs> certainly cheaper than the Bay Area. Just keep that yeah. in mind. <laughs> Yeah, I'm here in Berkeley, California. So we're we're on opposite sides of the country right now, but we get a bead together, which is amazing. Um, so yes, let me give everyone the full details. So we've got a full palette here, and this is kind of like a live sale palette because these are all brand new items that launched on the app and the website today. We're trying out a mini launch. It's a you know a website app exclusive. You did not have to be at a live sale to pick these up. Um, so at noon Pacific today, they went live. So what is in here? So, well, I'm going to start with this fabulous peach moonstone. These are a regular faceted heishis. They have a really nice color, the pinks, the mauve, the earthy tones, um, and a really nice chunky shape and size. Is that so those, the moonstone? Really curious. Yeah, this is the peach moonstone. I'm very curious what you do with that. 
it's a unique shape. You know, uh, I love these kind of stacked shapes and I didn't always mm -hmm. love them. I did not always yeah. love how that texture worked. And you know, I think when you know how to use a bead, it almost, it opens up your, the mm. creative floodgates of possibilities. Because I always looked at those kind of flat back, you know, that rondelle, that stacked shape. And I'm like, eh, mm -hmm. yeah, what good you always that? Look for a round. It's kind of yeah. weird, you know, well, I and it's not, two of them. <laughs> well, it's, it's, a, it's design wise, it's a harder shape to design with because we're used to using mm. round beads. I mean, it's the most common yeah. shape of beads, the most prevalent yeah. shape that you can buy. And if you don't know how to use those and you're sticking to just doing them as spacers, like in between each round, I think yeah. that's how, I think most people use them that way. Yeah. That, and it's that's my go-to instinct. Yeah. Well, the other mm -hmm. rondelle would be our Kambaba Jasper smooth he -shies. So a similar rondelle he, he -she shape. These ones are smooth. Kambaba Jasper is this is a really cool jasper because it has this green color. It has the black in there as well. Um, really nice variety of tones. Yeah, it's a pretty bead. Uh, it has kind of like a, it looks almost like there's like a shampoo kind of shimmer across the top, doesn't it? You know, that yeah, I, mean, they're I don't very know glossy. if that's just the light, but it looks kind yeah. of, I think it's some kind of variation in the stone. If you look at it closely, you could see it's kind of like almost like there was like blobs of like olivey green but they don't yeah. read that they read more even though it's um they're kind of a opaque stone it reads like something mm. with a shine because of those patches yeah. of uh, more transparent or translucent it's mm -hmm. pretty nice it's pretty nice yeah. and i like how they appear to be drilled really well yeah they do look good. That's also, look to me, that's even. also uh, delightful when I run yes. across <laughs> well-drilled beads. And these are particularly, I mean, some of these, you, some of these have a massive hole. So that's, you could get those nice. on like micro cord mm -hmm. or like hemp or a good linen, yeah. a waxed linen would fit yeah. through there easily. Yeah, do some knotting with these. That'd be great. For oh sure. yeah, knotted. Those would look good. Really good Those knotted. Fun. And then we do have two round beads. So we've got this is carb jade. I sent you the smaller size, the eight millimeter. So this mm -hmm. is the eight millimeter here. It's a nice mix of like greens and browns in there. And that carving is kind of that like polka dot dice design, mm -hmm. which gives it some flair. Gives it makes I mean makes them very unique for sure. Mm -hmm. yep, they kind of look like size. old Z beads, you know, those a antique beads. Have you seen those yeah. the agates that they etch with? Uh, I actually don't know yeah. what they etch them with. But yeah, they but usually have like very kind of a reminiscent white... of that. Yeah. Yeah, different, a little different looks. That's the larger size. We're going to be using the smaller size in class today, but we got both options going live. And then the check glass would be these are actually a warehouse closeout that we got. These are very high quality table cut check glass. That's like a specialty type of check glass. So these are sunflower coins in this deep mm. red leather silk with Picasso. They are single drilled. I think some folks might think they're double drilled, but they are just a single drill. Um, and these are on a crazy deal because we got these at a warehouse closeout. I think they retail 10 and they're like less than $7. So that's in like 15 They're pieces. They're really, on that color is good. You know, mm -hmm. I think of it, you know, Rachel, I think of that color like a neutral. Yeah. Uh, it's not a neutral, but uh -huh. I wear it. I mean, it's like my, you know, it's like my sweater. It goes with this sweater color is kind of the same, that tar dark red that yeah. you can mix it with green. It looks good. You can mix it with dark blue. I mean, pair it up, go put it up but right there next to that, that shimmery blue. It's still, it looks yeah. really good with it. Well, these the reds and the green here really are your your sweater right now and your background. You are you are this color palette. <laughs> I love oh, it. Oh yeah, when I was I, I that must have been subconscious, but um, <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna flip match. my camera. I'm gonna yeah, flip this so that. that we can get in here and look at what. Let's get started with some of this goodness here. Cool. Well, glad we could do a deep dive. Show everybody what we have. 
And then, yeah, these are the buttons we'll be using. So part of our goal today is to inspire everyone to figure out how to incorporate more buttons in their designs. You know, in the shop, we have metal buttons like these from Cynthia um, and from Green Girl Studios. We have check glass buttons. So we've got lots, lots of buttons in the shop. So today we want to help inspire you. How can you combine your gems, your check glass, and your buttons all together? So I'll add Cynthia back once she's got her camera all set up. But you gotta thank you. <laughs> You've got lots, lots of choices here. So there's no kit for today, but we do have all of these for sale. So you can pick and choose whichever beads are your favorite. I kind of love that this has become a little bit jumbled. It's a little more natural. And <laughs> I feel like they're on a like a, a landscape right now. <laughs> it's great. Okay, can I add your camera? Yeah, my square in there. I, think I can't so. tell if I'm squared. Looks I don't like it me. when I'm. It, you Let's know see. what I mean when it's like it, it kind of bugs me. I hate it when the camera looks like it's like you're sliding out of out of the scene. All right, I, I kind of took everything yeah. out of the bag so I could look Good. at it. I dumped it Good all job. out when I um, when we started talking, and you know what? Usually I do. I usually like to sort everything, and this is probably making some folks crazy. You know, to have <laughs> this jumbotron like this. So I will quickly separate them and put them in an order. Now, if I have beads and I'm going to make a bracelet out of this, what my initial reaction was was bracelet when I saw this mix. Mm -hmm. That was what my brain said. And I think what I'll do, I make piles. I don't know how everyone else designs, but my go-to is to make piles. And so I know that I like these. I know that I'm going to want to stack these like this. They're, that's, their, that's where these things shine is when they're like this. But I'm going to try them with either one of these in between or something smaller to really showcase their shape. I ain't got these. Idea. Yeah. So what I think I'll do, I really like using small beads to make a loop small so what i'll do is put these guys in a little pile this is going to be my loop right here and i have a trick to making a pretty fast bracelet you guys are going to love this okay so i have my little stack so maybe i'll do these like this and and this could change this is just my rough you know my initial how do I feel about it you know what I mean mm -hmm. and I'll change it around a few a few times and see but I think what I'll do is a double strand well, and you, I love how you approach design on the fly you are just super um I don't know you just sort of trust the process and kind of go well, with the flow see what happens that's part of the fun I think of jewelry making is that these components, unlike many, many, many other other types of hobbies, once you've cut it, like woodworking, once you cut it, you kind of made the cut. Same thing with mm -hmm. fabric. Once you cut it and you kind of made it and you're, you're restricted. With beads, you could just cut it apart when you're done and nothing really is lost except for your time and maybe a little bit of cord, which is, you know, not a huge investment, you know? Yeah. So... I've learned over the years to not restrict myself by really agonizing over this part, you know? This is the fun part. This is where, like, yeah. holding beads, touching them, getting a feel for them, you know? I mean, do I want to put a passage of, like, a change in texture like, I like color blocking my beads out. Some folks might not like to do that. You might want complete symmetry. I I rarely do anything with symmetry. Mm -hmm. You know, that's just not what I want to design with. And so I like to move things around and see how it flows. And if it's not flowing, I'll keep moving. So one thing about these, if you're using this kind of flat shape, you don't want to, if you're going to do a transit, if you're going to do a double, this is a double strand. If you're going to put it close to this part of the connection point, you're going to need a little bit of a transition. 
otherwise you get kind of an, an odd an odd uh, flow to your piece like it'll jump a little so use smaller beads like these as your transition because sense. it'll flow better to this point and I've got um, I've got these same beads actually in front of me I've cut up some strands and so I'm gonna come up with my own pattern so we're gonna see how each of us takes these same beads in two different directions yeah so. that's it's that's the fun part huh now there's yeah. a lot of different things you can do in this if you were to make a let you could do a leather right here instead of seed beads or uh, these uh, glass beads and make a woven type of uh, ladder bracelet and have these guys in the middle. See that? Mm. That's one design option. Almost like it's channel set. Yeah. That's one idea. You could do something where there are dangles across the bottom. Let me see if I have anything that'll work to demonstrate that. I don't see anything. All right. Sounds like you're opening up a present. <laughs> <laughs> I'm op I'm trying to get these uh, what you call it, crimps. Uh, these there crimps you go. are. All right. I'm just gonna begin. So I have some beetle on medium size. I guess it's the seven strand variety. Now this is how I like to work with this. I'm going to. Measure my wrist. Now, I am of the opinion that cord should be, uh, like, I'm really, really frugal with my materials usually, but I'm not with my cord. And the reason mm -hmm. is, is there's something so irritating about running out of space at like that you're like shy one inch or whatever oh my gosh There's yeah and then you have to restring it, it. That's you have to worst. restring <laughs> it so at that point you might as well have already cut more you know yeah so i'm doubling this so i cut like i don't know that seemed like maybe like doubled maybe 18 in, eight, eight inches doubled okay I think that's it. Okay, so for mine, I'm going to, for my double strands, this is going to seem so, like, cheating how fast it is. And I'm going to okay. say this, but hopefully I'm not, I'm not going to jinx myself with that, and then it actually takes a really long time. I like that finish on these. Yeah, it's just, like, satin, metallic kind of like an etched look mm -hmm. they're almost velvety mm -hmm. like that kind of watery look to them i don't even know how to describe it yeah they're really unique how they got that mm -hmm. finish yeah they're kind of rustic but they're faceted at the same time so what i'm doing is i'm adding i'm holding on to this because usually i have a little clip kate gave me these cute little clips I want to show you. They're so useful. I keep these clipped to my board. This is some kind of... I don't know what these are called, oh, yeah. but they're some kind of clip. I think of them and, as like chip clips. <laughs> mm -hmm, but they're, they're some kind of coating to make that where they mm -hmm. stay. And you won't, you know, you won't have uh, your stuff flying off. So yep. I'm going to do one side with a clip. What are the comments saying? Do we have any good comments? See. Well, we had some folks wish, wishing uh, a happy International Women's Day, which is today. Oh, I love that. Nice. All about celebrating women around the world and history through in so many different ways. And, and in one of those ways is art and creativity. So thank you all for joining us today on International Women's Day. Oh. That's that's nice. Let's see. And uh, another person said, I am new to this chat and to making jewelry. Uh, that oh. is Shandell. Welcome. Welcome to the land of making jewelry. 
<laughs> it's so fun. It's so, so good. Fun. I'm glad you stumbled it's upon our live today. Very relaxing. So what I'm doing is I'm going to make a loop that will fit the, bu the uh, button. So I'm just testing to make sure it clears. I don't want it to be too big because you don't want that to just, you know, you don't want it too big. Mm -hmm. And the reason is the button will pop out. It's just like a buttonhole that you would make in clothes. You wouldn't yeah. want it. If it's too loose, then your button's going to be popping out all the time. But too tight, then you're going to have to fight with it. So it's a... Uh, It's one of those things you got to measure it. Oh, we had someone say a nice comment. They said, you two are some of my favorite women to watch. Thank oh, you. Oh, that's sweet. I appreciate it. It's a very that. nice comment. Um, oh, someone okay. asked, are we using beading wire? Yes, we are. We're actually both using bead -along beading wire in the 0 0.018 inches or 0 0.46 millimeter size. Um, I'm using some that's 19 strand. Cynthia has seven strand, but it's the same thickness. Mm -hmm. And that is working well uh, through all of these beads. I'm not having any issues. Mm -hmm. I, I like to use the thickest I can get away with mm -hmm. in my work just because uh, if it's too heavy, sometimes it's like some of these things are the, the uh, weight of the beads. You want them to be you know, the right thickness of line. So it's not too, you don't have too big of a heavy bead on a thin cord. Right, let's see if this is a better, I put two small seed beads to improve that transition. Let's see how that works. Pretty good. All right, so I'm taking mine at the halfway point and I'm gonna make it even so the ends meet up and I'm going to put a crimp in there and lock it into place. That's going to form my buttonhole. So the seed beads are, is one on each strand. Is that what it was? Mm -hmm. I have a little but. Uh, seed beads. These are, are antique. They're not perfect. Like uh, my Yuki or one of those Toho beads. These are kind of oddballs. And they work, they kind of blend in. And they're in a neutral mm -hmm. color. Any of those, if you had silver ones, whatever color would work. Okay, I'm going to flatten that crimp. You could choose to flatten it, or you could do, a, you can squeeze it into the barrel shape. All right, I think I did that. Sometimes, you know, when you're, I'm looking at it, it's so small. I need to put my Optivisors on. Yeah, there is this crimp crimped? <laughs> <laughs> did I do it? Oh, I'll find out. Yeah, you'll find out if it stays together. <laughs> All right, so one of the things that can happen is if you have great big beads, this is, this is a common thing. So I cut this extra. Now... I'm doing that because I'm accommodating for the width of the beads because they will sit like this will sit on your wrist. And if you have great big beads, if you don't accommodate that, you're going to find even if you had extra line that your bracelet won't fit. Now we will see if I measured mm -hmm. enough. I gave myself another couple of inches, but we will see. And then you will realize why I do not like to cut my cord super short. Yeah. Yeah, I, I see what you mean. Yeah, these are, they're wider or thicker beads. So yeah, they're going to be a little, I don't know, a little bit farther away from your wrist. <laughs> the, mm -hmm. They'll float the, out the there a little further. Bead. Yeah, exactly. I kind of never thought about that. Yeah, if you're using chunky beads, you're probably going to need a little more wire than normal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you will. You will for sure. Because it'll sit against your skin. And yeah. stick out a little more. This one not, but these ones will. Yeah. And I'll show that. 
Now, what I'm doing now is I'm just seeing what it looks like. Like, do I like that like that? I've made this where there's two lanes to travel. Now, when you have things like this, these beads are fortunately all very well drilled so that you could, if you wanted, you can go, you could bead a loop of beads here and then come back and it would make like this sort of shape and you can go in and do the whole thing that way. In that case, if you were to do that, you would still cut yourself even more fine. Mm -hmm. And yeah, some of these beads will be able to fit two strands through them. I'm guessing on the peach moonstone hishi, some of them have pretty small holes and you probably only pass through it once. But some of them are a oh, little these, bigger. Oh, the, these green ones have massive holes. So those could yeah. easily go through and have uh, several. So this is what I was talking about when I was talking about the uh, connection point. So this is one of the smaller beads here. You'll need something to fill this area. If you have like like this size, I'll see how that looks. But usually I have something in a neutral that will pat, that will fill that in. And it's, I have these seed beads here that are the old ones I was talking about. It's funny, I got them from this antique dealer. They don't make them anymore. And you'll see here's, I don't know if it's because that's, this is on one strand. They're all a little bit different. So <laughs> I'm going to look for the it's ones that are really nice. short. I know it's kind of, you know, if you were to do this for bead embroidery or bead weaving, it'd be really frustrating, but yeah. for this type of project, it's like perfect. Yeah. You know, it's, they don't need to be perfect for, for this. They can be kind of misshapen and odd. And that's, you know, you can find things like that. The, a perfect place to find beads in that kind of style would be like, you know, uh, thrift stores you could cut up jewelry or you could find like at an estate so you might find a neat strand mm -hmm. to mix with your other beads it's a kind of a fun way to do that if you don't have a connection with vintage yeah all right i'm going to start putting these i want to they're all these are all really well sized so I'm going to try the blue in between and see how this looks. Because sometimes that can be a good pop of color. If I have enough. Seem like I might have enough to do that. Cool. Possibly. So one of the ways that I work is using... So this doesn't slide off. I'm going to put a thing there. And what I'll do is I'll just do a few passes and see what it looks like. And if I like it, then I keep going. And if it doesn't look good, then I'll just change it to something else. And this is kind of fun. It gives it kind of a caterpillar. If you had, mm -hmm. they're like knots almost. This function, these small beads, beads function as knots. So I think those are a little big on that. So maybe I'll try these beautiful jaspers can i show you what, what i've come like. up with so far let's see it cool all right so pretty make it bigger here it is so i was really loving the kambaba jasper so i like i basically made those the star with just little pops of the other beads kind of stacked throughout so that's going to be a bracelet um just like that a little different, oh, cute. a little funky. I like it. Love it. It looks good. Well, thank you. So that's where I'm at. Um, so you can see this is the same beads, and we're going to see what happens with Cynthia's, but it's going to end up in a totally different direction, which I think is great. Well, that's the fun of beads, isn't it? You know, you don't know <laughs> what another person's going to make. It's just mm -hmm. you can have the same palette and make different things, and that's you know, that's what's good about it. One of the yeah. many things that's good about it. Mm. I know this is, it's, uh, it's weirdly quiet in my studio. It's usually not that quiet. There's <laughs> usually fans and the, the, the sound of the air cleaner. 
it's kind of weird when it's super quiet. Wendy says, nobody is ever going to make the same thing. It's so true. We each have That's a different good. perspective. Yeah. That'd be boring if we all did. It, well, you know, the first things that people tend to make when you when you have like a beginner class in jewelry making, one of the first things people do is make things that are symmetrical. It's our eyes tend to long for that symmetry. Mm -hmm. And I think that's like one of the first, and it's a comfortable place, you know, to design yeah. from. And I yeah, think as I, I expanded for and my designs, I started to kind of uh, desire that uh, asymmetry. Yeah. Do you have, um, I've never asked you this, do you have a favorite gemstone? Oh, that's, that's like asking what's my favorite song. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's like, that's so hard. Because I mm -hmm. love it all. I love uh, opals, sapphires, all of that good stuff Ooh. on my... You like the nice stuff. <laughs> I do. So... You got, you got uh, high taste. I do. I, on Sunday evenings, I do a live sale or a tutorial or sometimes both at seven mm -hmm. Eastern time and I'll share some of my collection. So I shop for myself and I buy enough to, you know, maybe share a little bit, you know, with like four or five people. Yeah. And then that's like my lot of, of one lot. So if you want to see some of those sapphires, you can come, you can check out some of my favorites because I use them in my finished jewelry and I sell those at markets, you know, mm -hmm. when it's market season, it's just starting to become that here in Asheville. It's still cold and rainy, but and um, where, yeah. And where should people go to, to check out your Sunday night classes and, and Oh sales? yes. That's on my, Facebook page. Okay. I have a Facebook page. It's the Green Girl Studios. And we post from there. Sweet. Mm. Yeah, sometimes people post. We have a, a group called the Green Girl Studios Gang. And in that, people post pictures of things they've made with our products. So that's pretty fun. It's always fun to see what people make. Yeah. For me, at least, you know. Well, yeah, you made one piece of it, and now you get to see it totally transformed. Mm -hmm. So look how far this one sits. You can see how much it sits off of my the width. This is what I was talking mm -hmm. about. So you get, I don't know, that's maybe my, I don't know. It's hard to tell. It yeah. sits off of the skin, maybe like six millimeter. It's hard to say. Yeah. But that's what I was talking about when I was saying you add a little bit extra because look how much is left. And I cut that generously. I know, but you're going to need that to do your crimping. I'm going to need that if I'm going to try and come <laughs> back. I was like, man, oh man, this is starting to look like, am I going to make it? Getting nervous. <laughs> mm -hmm. Is it going to be like when they call it yarn chicken, when you're at, when your knitters yeah. call that yarn chicken, because you're coming to yeah. the end of the, are you, the end of the row is going to come f before the end of the piece of yarn? Well, we'll see if this line is going to come to the end of my bracelet. Hopefully it will work. And I'll get one side. And if this is the case, sometimes if I'll look at this and I'll be like, okay, so this is getting to be kind of, we're getting pretty close. I don't know if there's going to be enough um, to go all the way around my wrist. See, it still has to go this much. But look at that. Ooh, Yeah. That's not it too does much. not seem okay. So that's not going to be. I can see that that's not going to be enough. So the trick to that, if that happens, is to switch gears. So how you you're like, oh, what do you do? Okay, here's what you do. I'll, I'll show you exactly what you do. You move to a different type of bead. So I'm going to go probably. I'm going to take off maybe this much, and it'll look. I think what I'll do is either go this route, or go this route. You need a smaller diameter of bead is what needs to happen. Mm -hmm. So I can do, and this is kind of like color blocking where you're going to like, almost like you're calling back a color. I could pick up this or I could pick up if I wanted to do those, but 
I think what I'll try to do in this case is see what it looks like to do a mix of these blue ones and we'll see if it looks good but that's the part of design I don't know will that work we'll see if I can make it if I can get that transition to look less like oh I think she ran out of beads or she didn't add enough yep. soft flex that's what sometimes I... that looks like <laughs> I think I also just made a mistake, so I will show that as well. <laughs> um, I was making my loop because I want to do the button as well. And I realized I didn't put the crimp bead on first because I, mm. I didn't start with mine. So I've got, you know, my design. I added seed beads, do my loop. And I'm like, wait, I'm not going to be able to crimp this. So I'm pretty sure I need to take, <laughs> take the seed beads off. I need to add my crimp tube and then put the seed beads on, right? So that way I can go back through the crimp tube to make my mm -hmm. button loop. Okay. I don't think there's a way around my my thing. I think I just gotta restring. <laughs> mm. So the way I figured this is I went and found a transitionary color. It matches up to these. Look how close of a color match. Yeah. So I could just blend in from that spot and I'm changing and it looks I don't know. Does it look like I meant to do that? We'll see. I like that. Yeah, because the the carved jade has that natural variation, so it doesn't. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it doesn't look too high contrast. It's not. It's not jarring that change. Good, good. Because otherwise, I'd have to like get like find another pattern, you know, like or find mm -hmm. a pattern within that. But I think this will be a short enough in the depth where I could get that around my wrist see if I can fix it. and the thing is is I need to have enough room to pull it you know you have to have enough room to pull it uh sideways you know that's one of the things yeah. if you make it too short you won't have enough room otherwise it can be a gift for someone with a smaller wrist <laughs> mm -hmm. the small a child that you know <laughs> <laughs> maybe a teenager <laughs> <laughs> this would be very sophisticated for a five-year-old. But... Yeah, hopefully I don't make it where it only fits a five-year-old, right? <laughs> All right, so see, I have now transitioned this. I'm going to switch those. Where I'm trying to match up to these dark colors so I can go even smaller. Let me find some of these lighter color ones so that the transition there is a little bit and you know a lot of times you can transition beads with your filler beads you know your seed beads or whatever mm -hmm. that you might have handy so in this case i might start bringing back the blues in this part of the bracelet we'll see if it works i'm just testing it Oh, my, maybe. Which is your favorite bead in this grouping? Ooh, my favorite one. I, I think it's the Kambaba Jasper. I mean, I just, I yeah. literally used like so much of it. I think it's oh, just. Yeah. It's, you know, I really like yeah. how pretty the, the, they're, they're the same. They're in the same color family, but there's a lot of variation. Mm -hmm. See that? Yeah, it's something about that sort of like hunter green, forest green. Really, I'm vibing with it today. Mm -hmm. It's not, you know, mm -hmm. some greens are very bright or very spring and light. This one's, this one's different. This one's unique. Mm -hmm. It's very, uh, it has a good, like, it's not too saturated of, of a color. Yeah, but I think it can it can pair with a lot of different things. Like it, I think it looks good with this red. You know, I think it looks yeah, it good. Yeah, it's a little more. With... It almost becomes more of a neutral too. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, if you mix the colors with, I don't know. I just love color in general and playing with it. It's so fun. Um. Someone just asked, what are the carved red ones? So I've got these carved red beads in my design, and I and I bet we'll see them soon in Cynthia's. But these are uh, Czech glass beads. They are Czech glass table cut carved sunflowers. 
So they're kind of like a little flower. Um, you got that Picasso in the center and all on the outside. So these we got in it from a closeout warehouse, a warehouse that was closing. So we got a crazy deal. Um, so you can pick up a strand of those if you'd like there. They're check glass. I love it when that happens. When you yeah, find something unique. <laughs> it's so fun. It's so good. So again, um, I'm putting, if you have two strands, make sure your transition beads so you don't have like a big traffic jam at this part or at your mm -hmm. connection point. Mm. Yeah, they look good together. I like it. And I think I have enough to do this bracelet with having more of that blue it's almost like it's the the color that's binding the two it's like a, kind of like a current mm -hmm. keeping it together the two strands mm -hmm. you're getting in the zone i am <laughs> in the zone I'm, it's i love it's, it um it's go time now we got to get these bracelets made I know. Well, you know, it's, uh, you know, when you, they say when you're in the flow state, your brain is at your most, like your peak human. <laughs> you're doing what it is to be human. Creating with your little hands, using your big brains and your eyes <laughs> to make things. We were doing this Sundance inspired kind of like party uh, last week. There was a few people mm -hmm. doing it. And one of the things is if you if you're familiar with the Sundance jewelry catalog, I think most people are. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of color blocking that takes place in the in the catalog. And it's been, you know, people I've seen this over and over. They come to the bead shows and they'll be clutching a Sundance catalog and looking to get to make dupes or in inspired pieces. And yeah. I think that's pretty cool because a lot of the stuff in there is really expensive. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, you know, you can get that kind of look by your palette mm -hmm. and by color blocking. And I think that's that's one of the standard things that they do. So in this piece... I've changed, I've blocked several sections of yeah. different types of beads. And that's considered, you know, this is, I'm considering this as blocking. I'm blocking out these shapes. Now, I'm testing this to see if I like it. This is how many I have here. So I don't know if I love that. I like it, but I don't love it. So I'm going to go back and remove them and I think what would be even better is if I had them spaced out a little more so I so they go the whole span of my bracelet okay because I've color blocked through here and it's good to yeah. have some continuity you know like you have a river running right next to it and so I'm thinking this should be my continuous strand that'll, maybe that'll I'll run... have a little more symmetry Mm -hmm. There'll be a little more symmetry, possibly, but um, the symmetry that'll be here will be in the patterning. That's that's where I'll mm -hmm. do that. And maybe, you know, I can never do just something symmetrical. It's almost... <laughs> I know. I, once I said that, you're like, wait, may maybe not. <laughs> I'm, like, well, I'm going to fight it now. But I don't want to use too much of this shape because I was running out of space with it. So I can't go too. Cl I can't use too much of that, even though I I want to. Can I'd love I, to drag yeah. it back on this side. Yeah. See that? Wouldn't that be so perfect to do that? Mm -hmm. Could I get your uh, expert opinion over here? Let's see. I'm uh, trying to decide if I have the right size for for the loop here. Mm -hmm. So this is where it's at right now. I haven't crimped it. Um, don't crimp it I, until, listen, don't which crimp way it should until. I yeah, put the other side on, put that button on, 
and then pinch that closed or put a piece of tape. You don't want to crimp it yet because you want to be able to kind of finagle it and test it. Oh, so you know I, I mean? should attach. I should attach. Yeah, the put that first. one on. But okay. leave leave a little bit of room. Yeah, you've done it right. You have to have like a little bit of play so that you can have room to pull the button mm -hmm. up to turn it sideways to get it out. Yes. You see what I mean? Because you're going to flip yeah, it on you... its side to put it through. Yeah. So there you I go. need. You see what I mean? So like, like when I make this loop, like, is should I almost make the loop a little? not too small like is it good to make it a little bigger no what i mean no. is that when you put it on you want to make sure that you have enough that it's the bracelet is long enough to pull through the loop that you've made mm, okay you see what Got i mean it. yeah yeah I, I can't have it be like exactly my wrist it needs to be a right because you won't it'll, it'll be too short to pull it through the actual loop yeah Yeah, this actually is probably is too short if I'm going to make it for myself. Okay, I'm going to make it a little longer then. Thank you. All right, I will head back to your view. Let's see what what you're trying out. Mm -hmm. There's different ways that you can do this, and it's it's all pretty fun. I usually like to put a really, really small seed bead in between these heishis, that flat rondelle mm -hmm. shape, so it gives it a look like they're knotted in between that's one of my favorite yeah. little tricks is to find like a charlotte especially looks like a knot you know so now i'm just testing what looks good in that spot and checking it out seeing what looks pretty that's the fun of beating isn't it yep Ooh, i like this i like what i'm seeing there Thank you. Yeah, that's right, pretty good. Once, once that's strung up, I guess then, yeah, you can show us, you'll show us how to attach the button and get that to form. I'm excited. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they almost look like there's like swirls. With yeah. these with that stone carving beads. What are these? The Jasper? What tell me again uh, the name of it? Yeah, those are carved jade. Oh, that's the jade. Mm -hmm. Yeah, jade is supposedly a very lucky stone. Hmm. Especially in Asian cultures. My friend of mine brought me, she was like, what do I she brought this really beautiful yellow jade. She was like, what stone is this? And I'd seen it because it's really popular right now. And it's just a really pretty buttery color. But this has hints of that. Like, mm -hmm. this is considered, I would say that's almost a yellow jade. So you get that color play where it's you get browns and you get that deep olivey color. It's pretty good, you know. I could have, in theory, I could have gradated that so it kind of blended better with that one. Yeah, it's looking pretty, pretty nice. Yeah, the strands are really starting to tie together. Yeah, you can see how it's sort of forming a cohesiveness by the use of that blue, which is funny because it's, it's a very uh, small amount, but mm -hmm. it's holding all these other colors together. Yeah. That's like, I consider that like in quilting and crochet, they're like, oh, if it's not working, you just put, they call it, put an ugly, ugly color in. And I think what they're trying to get at, instead of actually, you know, you're, you're not actually putting an ugly color, you're putting a color that usually wouldn't work because it's usually like a contrast, you know, like something that makes the other colors seem to wake up. Mm. All right, let's see if this will work. So I have enough here, but if I go too much, I think it'll be a little too long. Let me see. Maybe I can make it work. All right. 
now I'm at the point that I hate. When I remember I said I don't like it when it's too short. Now you uh -huh. guys are going to see me fight with this. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> the time has come. All right. So that's what I have on this for the double strand. So cool. All right. I'm going to now I have the two strands here. Now the key to this is for one, it's not lining up exactly. That's okay. It doesn't have to. What we'll need is something big that'll that'll bring those in. These have a great big hole. So I could put both of those through there. Now you see my transition does not look great if you try to do that. And especially like even pushing it all the way and pulling these out. It still doesn't have the right, it's still kind of jumbly. So I'm going to take some seed beads and pack those in there the same way I did here. And that gives you a little bit of a tidier transition. And I put three on each side. Here I might just put, if I have short ones. Now they kind of go invisible, I think. Like these little transitionary beads. Some people like to get kind of bent out of shape and they're like, I don't have enough, I don't have enough uh, to make it. It has to be the same on both sides. Uh, you don't have to do that. That is only if you absolutely like things to be the same on both sides. Sometimes, I have to admit, sometimes I like them to be very, yeah. you know. If it's this way on one side, I want it to be the same. But <laughs> with an asymmetrical piece, you don't have to do that. And sometimes it works better, if especially if it's like uh, the flow of a piece or the drape, especially. Now you can see now they meet together. So you just need something that's a hair smaller, a millimeter or two smaller than the transition or the transition bead. These I consider those. This is a transition up to this spot where I can then put the crimp. And I can tuck it back through there. The button is going to cover a lot of that. All right, I'm going to put in a crimp. Where'd that crimp go? I poured a bunch of them on my board. And then you know what? They blend in. Yeah. <laughs> oh, here they are. Tucked neatly at the top. Oh, I can't see it. Okay, I'm going to get in there i don't know if i love that i actually don't love that so i'm going to come back out and put something a little less large i need something small because it's not you know this side doesn't it's it's going to be odd it's going to sit funny all right and that's what i was talking about so i'm going to put in the crimp yep do what i forgot <laughs> you need that crimp Add my button. Okay, through both both strings are going through. Yeah, it's stronger. Yeah. If I can see it to get it through there, come on, you get in there. All right, here we go. Now see that man? That's like only an inch. It's not much to work with, and it can be very very frustrating. So that's why I say put a, put more because you don't want to be like this. You don't want to be like me at the end of this <laughs> trying to, to to finagle this through there, and it's it's not easy. Actually, it is pretty easy. I take that back. So uh, that went in much easier than I thought, and I'm gonna drag that it's through. Lucky day. <laughs> it is my lucky day. That oh no, it isn't because it didn't go through the cramp. <laughs> I spoke too soon. All right. Well, We'll see if I can do repeat that, but this time actually catch both the crimp and the other bead, the backup bead, the spacer, whatever you want to call that, transitional bead. Okay, now sometimes you might need to get your optivisors out. I'm hunting for the other side of this. It's like, where'd it go? Did it make it through there? You know what? I'm really resisting looking out the window. I'm like Mrs. Kravitz from Three's Company. 
peeking out the window. I hear somebody outside. Uh-huh. <laughs> and I live in a really quiet neighborhood. So if there's anything, I'm like right at the door. <laughs> Curtains twitching all over the place. And it's not <laughs> even twitching. They're opening really wide so I can stand there and stare openly at whoever <laughs> is in the cul-de-sac. Yeah. Just wave. Be like, you see, I'm here. <laughs> is your casting neighborhood studio watch. in your home? It's in my garage. In your garage. I have a two-car garage, so that doesn't sound... I know it doesn't sound like when you're thinking of the studio, you're probably thinking, oh, downtown Asheville. No, downtown Asheville is too expensive. Yeah. Now I need to use pliers to get this. Because it's... See, you can't get it. Otherwise, it's too... It's I, It was too short. Otherwise, you could just pull that with your fingers. This, I need help. Because otherwise, it's too short. So I'm tugging that through, trying not to crimp it all and make it too tight or too loose. And this is the tricky part because what I'm doing now is I have two pieces of soft flex running through a crimp and through this big seed bead. And what I don't want to do is see there's a little bit of play here. You see that? Mm -hmm. Now, neither do you want this to be so tight that it's stiff. But you also don't want it so that there's big gaps showing because that does not look professional when you have like, whoa, look at all that. You know, you don't want to see that. You want it tidy, but not super tight. So I'm going to try and tighten that one up a little more. And it can be hard to adjust it because you don't know which which strand you're pulling. You know what I mean? You, I, don't, I don't know which this side. Yeah. I can't tell. I have no idea. I'd be pulling the other one really super tight. Okay, that feels snug, feels good, and I'm going to go in. And in this case, I'm not going to try and I'm not going to try and, and do the barrel. I'm going to go straight flat. I'm just going to use the top okay. and flatten it. And the reason I'm doing that is in this case, you can choose. Like you can get this. This is one option, or you can flatten it like a taco, right here. And I did it this way, but this sometimes will make it a little bit looser. Unless you get that and you're, you crunch it really hard. But I've found with that end, sometimes I'll just go ahead and do them all, all like this because they're, they're pretty, it's, it seems to me that these hold pretty well. That bo it both works well. But in this case with the mm -hmm. four strand, I found that when I've tried to go back in it and, and round it off, it almost loosens the whole thing. So I'm not going to mm. do that this time. Okay. I'm going to trim that. And you shouldn't use scissors. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. Let's see. Cool. Now I could, in theory, oh, like this looks really small through there. You could always go back in and put a bead cover. You know those ones that are kind of split? You could wire yeah. wrap around that with other beads. I like that technique too. And you could do it on the other side. I'll try and see if I can get it on myself. Well, this is good. I'm about, I'm going to crimp mine down as well right now. Yeah. Awesome. Just yeah, those moonstones look so good. Look at that. Ooh, yes. I like that a lot. What's everybody that think? Is, that is awesome. All right, let me make that big again. That is so cool. I love These are it. such Chunky, a pretty color too. All of that together. I this can turn think of a lot of outfits direction. I'd wear that with. Oh, thank you. I think it looks good. It's not too loose. It's good. Oh, and then what I was talking it. about being long enough is this. See, to get through the loop, you have to have enough to pull and then go through. See, if it was too flush like this and it's too tight. You would not, you would have to really fight to get it off. But when it's, there's a little bit of just enough. See how I did that? That's the play I was talking about. So you could get wiggle up through there a little easier. All right. Let me, do you mind if I, I'm going to add mine back on and I'll finish All right. mine off. All right. 
All right, just, I tested it out and it looked good. Now I just need to crimp this. Let's see, here we go. Oh, I'll go to the back one. Let's see my own camera. All right, there we go. All right, I'm making, before I crimp it, I'm just making sure my bracelet is curved so I know it has some give to it. And then I will come in. Oh, I want to crimp the crimp too, but I do not want to do the seed beads next to it. Let's see. What's in the way here? There we go. That looks good. All right, now I'm just going to go to the second part of my crimper. All right. There we go. Looking good. I like the seed beads you chose for your loop. Yeah, these are just some 11 Toho bronze ones I had here. Mm -hmm. They look good. Thank you. Yeah, I did a, I'm doing mixed metal. I got a little bit of the, the bronze and then obviously the pewter. All right, I stuck that through a few beads, so now I can cut it off. And now I get to finish the bracelet. Let's see. I'm gonna make that a little taller. Get it around the little legs, the antennae. There we go. Cute. I can make that the front. I could make that the front. Whatever I mm -hmm. want. Any which way it goes, it looks good. And I guess I can turn this guy, which he kind of will move around. <laughs> yeah, looks good. So fun. Your friend. Thank you. There we go. Well, there we go. We have a one strand and a two strand bracelet option. Yeah. I love it. Nice Take work. That one away. Thank you. Well, thank you for all the tips, getting the, the seed beads right. I think the biggest thing was just kind of testing out the sizing. All right, I need to add a seed bead. I need to remove a seed bead till it till it feels right. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that was, I mean, uh, that was not, I wasn't moving particularly fast either. So you can make a bracelet, a two strand or one strand mm -hmm. in about an hour, you know, yeah. and probably faster if, if you weren't you know, talking about each bead and really going over it, you know? <laughs> yeah. Well, and I, and it was cool to see a two strand bracelet come together, but you only used one strand. Like that started as just one piece of beading wire that was just folded in half. You had one crimp tube on each side, just like a normal bracelet. So mm -hmm. I like, it's thank kind you for of, those um, it's my like, it's a fast way. It looks like it takes longer, but really if you mm -hmm. have the, the clips to, to stop it or a piece of tape or something to keep yeah. that from, you know, you don't want your work rolling off after you've strung it and that'll yeah. make a pretty fast piece. So it's a nice way to design on the fly with a bunch of beads that, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, I just opened it and looked at it. So, you know, it's fun to, it's a good way to boost your creativity by limiting your palette. And it's a yeah. good challenge. Say you get a box from, you know, Rachel, you're packing a box for somebody that here's a challenge. Don't mm -hmm. go and get a bunch of like challenge yourself to get one color or one seed bead and sit down and make something from that right there. And I guarantee you, it will open up your, like your, your neural pathways will be popping. <laughs> you know? um, and I'm just gonna remind folks that if you wanna pick up any of the beads that we showed off today, I recommend heading to the Sam's Bead Shop app, right on, on the main tab, shop our latest finds. Today, we've got the Carp Jade, the Kambaba Jasper, Peach Moonstone, the Buttons, the English Cuts, and the Table Cuts. They're all right there here at the top. You can also search for them if you want anything in particular. Um, but this is, this is our brand new launch. These were not in a live sale, but they went straight to the app and the website today. It's like direct to DVD. That's what it was. Nice. <laughs> there and we go. So. So I think that, that, you know, these would look good with turquoise. You could put in, you know, what all of the different, mm -hmm. it's almost, it's like you would not think that that batch would be as uh, easy to work with, but it is, you know, sometimes it's like, sometimes I'll get 
uh, a surprise bag in front of me. And it's a real challenge, Rachel. It's a real challenge. If you have some, if it's not your colorway, you know, and you're looking at it going, oh, I don't know how am I going to make that work. But this, I feel like, was pretty easy to navigate. The shapes, you have enough variation. It's fun. It becomes a real fun project. Yeah. Awesome. Well, I hope folks will check out these beads, pick up whatever they'd like. Um, make sure to grab the button. Um, and we have also a bunch of other amazing Green Girl Studio pieces. Um, and I'm, oh, do, do you have any sneak peeks for us today? I don't, oh, or should we save I have, them? Um, I don't know if I showed these before, but I have like this one. It's called the Lunar Ring. That's a new one. I don't know if it's on okay, the Okay, these are things, we don't have these yet, but we're, to, uh, we're you guys but are they're really new. Keep, I mean, yeah. like <laughs> these are things I mean. that we might have to get in the shop. So, so you guys know I love a ring, a link. Mm -hmm. So I love putting chain and different things through there. So that's yeah. one thing that's new. It's not on the show. I don't know if it's on the thing yet from our website. This is kind of like an almond. This is almost like a clothing clasp. And I made Ooh. that for leather. My daughter, Azalea, she was making leather stamped, vegetable tan stamped uh, mm -hmm. bracelets. It was like, uh, I don't know if I want to use a button with this. I wish I had a buckle. And so I was like, huh? Let's see. I mean, I didn't <laughs> yeah. just go down and make it. I mean, it took me a, a little, a minute to make it, but um, that's new. This is a really weird one. I don't know what I was thinking about when I made this, except that it's like for resin. Um, oh, we'll see what ooh, make like a little like resin geode in there or something. It's because, you know, I sometimes it's, I was thinking of a shell and you know, yeah. when I painted it, I painted this. And my daughter, she was like, mom, why did you pick like peach? Because it's kind of like a shell, you know, was, I did shell colors. Mm -hmm. And she was like, you made it look like it had like zits all over it. Because I, <laughs> I highlighted them with like a light yeah. pink and a darker pink. She's like, you basically made, it looks like a little bumpy little zit thing now. And I was like, hmm, not that's what not what I was for. going for. No. But there, here we are. Yeah, yeah. So, she anyway. just tells it like it is. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Well, that's some cool stuff. Well, we'll we'll have to take a look at that. Um, well, thank you again so much for sharing your creativity you and inspiration. Me. We appreciate it. Um, and we, yeah, I that's hope fun. It's weekend. always a good time, Rachel. Always thank a good you. time. Awesome. All right. Well, thank we'll talk so to everyone later. Bye, y'all. Bye, everyone.